Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time saying thanks. In 2018, I went to Vanuatu together with uh, our chairperson, Lawrence Gangloff, and one of the regional representatives from the committee in Australia, Vicky Marnie. And we went there in 2018 to start the writing process. We met an enthusiastic group of women and young women from different denominations in Vanuatu with different life experiences, but they were eager to participate in this ecumenical initiative. So by September of 2019, the worship service materials were ready and distributed to all World of Prayer committees. Now that we are in 2020, we are looking towards March of 2021, when we will be united in prayers with the sisters and people of Vanuatu. The theme assigned to Vanuatu by the working group at the International Meeting in 2012 in New York was built on a strong foundation. Personally, I find this very appropriate theme for the time we are living now. We need to know our foundation and you need to hold on that. And we need to be wise to live in the midst of this pandemic and to care for the communities in need and also to the families who are, are feeling and grieving uh, for the loss. The impact of the pandemic is much greater than anybody can even uh, imagine. And we are still in the midst of that. It, it is really an exciting uh, theme, building on strong foundation. Uh, when we think of the theme, building on strong foundation in Vanuatu, uh, we sort of automatically switch our minds to the country's motto, in God we stand. Or in uh, our local uh, language, Longotio Mistana. Without God, we can do nothing. And how our country has developed during its 40 years of independence shows and reflects the basic foundation of that belief in God we stand. And uh, with this team building on strong foundation, we believe uh, it affirms the motto of our country uh, for our generations today. If I may say, it's an awakening call for the citizens of Vanuatu, as of course, uh, we have uh, been going through a lot of societal issues that are affecting Vanuatu very much as well. Therefore, the theme uh, is very much appropriate for the nation today and the world at large. In, uh, in these uncertain times of uh, the global pandemics, pandemic that is uh, affecting the world, COVID-19, and uh, God is the foundation of the world. And should be the foundation today. Therefore, our hope for the world and Vanuatu is that we all should be building our faith in God alone and every other things would be added as in his word. He said we seek uh, uh, his uh, face and his righteousness and all the other things would be added unto you. So we believe in that, the strong foundation and um, as uh, we look at how the, the COVID-19 is affecting the country today and with all the, 
the repatriates of the Nivanuatu citizens coming back from other countries. We believe that uh, they have been mindful of uh, uh, our motto, In God We Stand. So all of them that were repatriated to Vanuatu, none, none of them was affected with the uh, coronavirus to this day. So we feel that this wisdom is in our people who are in other countries of the world uh, coming back to Vanuatu. And today in the country, the way that, uh, the, way that the country is dealing with uh, uh, these issues that are affecting the nation, uh, we believe uh, our citizens are going back to the theme in God we stand, the motto of the country in God we stand, and uh, taking in a lot of uh, measures to make sure that the word of God is preached and uh, in the pulpits and amongst families so that we could uh, um, live wisely in this time of uncertainties. With the challenges that we have now, I think Vanuatu, uh, we, we experience a double disaster, I would say that, because we've all, we already have this COVID-19, and then we had T.C. Harrell, the, the Category 5 cyclone that destroyed some of our islands. So that is like, I would say it's a double disaster for Vanuatu. Um, we were, I think we Vanuatu has, is becoming so resilient to some of these disasters because like it's always happening every year. Uh, we have a season for cyclone in our countries and we, we know that during, from October to, to March, uh, there's the season of the se uh, cyclone season in our country. So we, are all, we always prepare for those, uh, for those times. But uh, the thing is that, you know, sometimes in the islands or, or maybe the, uh, the, the cyclone is very, it's very tense that sometimes it destroys everything. It's natural disaster anyway. But we are, we are so glad because the government and other NGOs uh, we, and other church as well, they stepped up in their response uh, program. Uh, and now we are in the recovery process of the program as well, uh, which is so good. Uh, people are coming, try, I mean, they are becoming, um, they're getting back to normal slowly. Uh, but uh, that I would say that, you know, it has been happening here in Vanuatu and people in Vanuatu know about all these disasters and the challenges that face, you know, we face after the disaster. So um, with, the, with the child malnutrition, I think uh, um, I would also say that, you know, there, there are some children in Vanuatu that, uh, comes, you know, they have they have these uh, uh, issues with them, but maybe uh, maybe there are some other problems that are attached to these children mal malnutrition, because we have our land, and uh, you know we have our our our, our ocean, which uh, it's all rich, and uh, Vanuatu doesn't believe in child children child malnutrition, but it happens, and it happens especially when uh, parents are not careful, you know, they don't feed their children well, or there are some other, there are other, the other challenges attached to that. With the violence against women, yes, of course, uh, we have this COVID-19 and the challenges there is that uh, uh, it has laid off a lot of employees. They are not working anymore, especially those in the hotel industry or the tourism industry, and that really affects uh, some of the families here in Vanuatu. Um, but slowly they, they are coping with that. And um, also we, we see this uh, COVID-19 uh, um, pandemic as an opportunity for, for us to, to, to get back to our, our agricultural system that we had in the, before with our, our, with our, with our great grand uh, great, great great grandparents that we have before. Um, every, almost everybody uh, planting something because we know that we don't know when this will finish, you know, the COVID-19 issue is going to be finished. So uh, we are being encouraged, people are being encouraged to have a uh, home gardening, you know, and also to, to have uh, to plant as well, uh, uh, not only for, 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 for the, 
um, what like the domestic consumption, but we are going to commercial con uh, commercial uh, um, market as well. Uh, which some people in the islands, you know, they would plant a lot of uh, vegetables and come to villa and sell them. They come to town and sell them. So that also helps us. But with the with the uh, issue of uh, um, domestic violence, uh, it happens. It happens because uh, sometimes it's just frustration of, uh, of um, money. People don't have enough. They don't have enough resources. Then, you know, this, that's where frustration comes in and uh, we see some of these domestic violence issues happening. Um, but with all these challenges, you know, because Vanuatu is a Christian country, we always, the women in the churches, you know, when they know about this, they always want to come in and, you know, just step in and assist, uh, assist in prayers, uh, uh, give assistance in prayers, not only in prayers, but also with, with material things as well, uh, with those who are, who, are, who are facing these challenges. So, like I said, well, I think in the past, before last year, we had also had this uh, uh, volcanic eruption in one of the islands, uh, which uh, the government has to um, forget that island, all the people from that island has to be vacated to another island. So we've been going through different challenges all the time, uh, but um, I think because we believe in God and we believe that uh, whatever we go through, we know that God is with us and he's always getting us through. Thank you. To add uh, a little bit to what uh, Ruth said, um, just from where I came from, one of the islands where the volcano has erupted and with the people evacuating and now they're back and they're resettling. And from, I have been there myself and I've seen like young people and women are into gardening which is a good thing. Yeah, I, and I, I was so excited to see even young girls and young boys starting to plant again, starting again to plant gardens from where I come from. So they are harvesting. At the, at the moment, they are harvesting the crops and living on that. So it's a good thing. And I'm excited. I just want to be there and join them to plant. So. <laughs> Thank you. I think, um, like uh, Cindy has already mentioned about the, the COVID-19 situation that we have here, uh, I think we are so grateful for our government. Uh, our government has really worked hard and set up a task force, which assists, uh, is assisting us these days. Uh, one of the challenges that we have here is that because we have this uh, regional uh, seasonal work, uh, employment that we have uh, pa we have a, a partner or a relationship with the New Zealand government where our people go there to do seasonal work you know to collect uh, fruits and all that sort of thing uh, and getting them back here is also one of the issues but the government is taking control of that you know when they come back they have to be um, quarantined. Quarantined, quarantined for 14 days uh, and that helps a lot, but uh, and Vanuatu is still uh, free from COVID-19, so yeah. we praise God for that. Yeah. Okay, with what the committee is planning about the celebration in 2021, uh, as you know, we have set up a working committee, a working committee made up of uh, uh, women from different denominations, including a few men with us. Uh, we've set up the committee and they've already started. We gave them a, a term of reference where for their responsibilities, what they should do, uh, and they've started working on it. Uh, uh, next year, uh, the, the, uh, our, we are also planning a workshop on the 4th, that is on, on a Thursday, full day on Thursday. Uh, we are planning of thinking of having a different boot, uh, boots, you know, a different boots of different workshops in different boots and women will just uh, move from one boot to another, uh, yes, to, to hear about these issues and how they can, uh, they can help their communities or their families with this. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, on Friday, uh, we'll have our celebration, okay? On Friday, we'll have our celebration. We are thinking of having a parade, uh, a parade from a certain place to Independence Park where we'll have our celebrations there. 
Independence Park is a, a park where we all have these uh, uh, national celebrations. Uh, and we are thinking of inviting the head of state there as well, the prime minister and other dignitaries to our, to, I mean, here in Vanuatu to attend our celebrations as well. And then we'll have a big lunch together and we'll have different uh, performances. Uh, our women performing maybe custom dancing or dramas and all that sort of thing. Then we'll close. So that's, that's just a tentative uh, program for the time being. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, Ruth mentioned the uh, worker program. Uh, a lot of the Pacific Islanders can come to Australia and New Zealand, and uh, that money is very um, much appreciated because they send it back home. And now the problem is uh, for them to get back home when their contract is finished. And... Uh, that has been a difficulty, I understand, but now it is happening, and Ruth mentioned the government. Um, of course, there was a delay in sending people over, so that was a lack of money going back to the people. And just recently, Australia has opened the program again, and more workers are coming to Australia, agriculture workers for picking the mangoes and things like that. And that money does go back because Vanuatu hasn't got, has lost the 40% uh, they get from tourism and the money that goes back uh, from the overseas workers. So um, it's quite desperate, really. And the government have managed marvelously in closing the borders and therefore. Vanuatu is one of only eight or nine countries that has no COVID. But the flip side of that is, I mean, underneath that is the fact that they haven't got the medical facilities to uh, be able to attend to the people if they had an outbreak. So I, I agree with Ruth, the government has done quite well. Currently, we are moving into our fruit season and we're desperately short of these amazing and wonderful workers that we've had in the past from Vanuatu. Government is looking very, very closely at opening the borders to these essential workers, but it's not happening at the moment. So we will just watch that space, but we're getting to a critical time. Uh, the cherry fruit orchards are, are coming into production and it really is coming into that season when we need these wonderful, wonderful workers, our Pacific friends. So just watch this space and uh, stay safe and our borders are still closed at the moment. Okay. Um, with the Australian, uh, my, this, my sister, they have just mentioned about the uh, the medical facilities that we don't have in Vanuatu, yes, that is really true. And we depend uh, so much in other, to, yeah, we, in other countries to assist us. But at the moment, we don't have uh, those medical facilities with us. Um, and we are, yeah, maybe I'm not sure whether we have the testing, uh, the testing equipment with us to test the COVID-19. Uh, Maybe maybe it just arrived or came. I don't really know about that. Uh, but we are depending so much on Australia, New Zealand, and other countries as well to assist us with us with that. Um, and uh, we are still thankful that we we are still COVID nineteen. We have COVID nineteen free, and uh, we hope that we will remain that way. Uh, and also now that uh, our people, some of our students, are also overseas. And some of people are still overseas, you know, but uh, uh, the government will only allow those that whose contracts or whose visas are finished, you know, expired to come back to Vanuatu. Otherwise, uh, those that the contracts and the visas are still, uh, are still uh, valid, uh, they are not allowed to come back until they finish off their term, you know, of their work or their studies. Okay, so that's, that's for Australia, but uh, uh, really didn't stop us uh, just recently, uh, we have already set uh, dispatch, I think, two groups of people to go to Australia for mango to collect the uh, yeah to um, yeah uh, yeah uh, fruit picking, especially mango in Australia. 
that we have already, I think, dispatched two groups of people uh, for that. Uh, that's uh, that's the arrangements between the government of Australia and uh, Vanuatu, and we just hope that uh, they there they'll be called, they will be free from this uh, uh, this uh, COVID nineteen uh, uh, health issues, and then before they come back to Vanuatu. Um, with the New Zealand uh, one, um, yes, uh, most of our seasonal workers, I think, they've already returned to Vanuatu, um, but. Uh, because it's one of the one of the one of the opportunities where uh, people in Vanuatu, you know, get uh, they get uh, assistance, financial assistance. So it's something that really helps us with the seasonal workers program. It really helps the families here in Vanuatu to change their lifestyle and all that sort of thing. Because uh, you know they go there, they do the work, and then they come back, and it, it really helps the families here in Vanuatu. So we're so thankful to Australia and New Zealand government for assisting our people on that on those on that program. Thank you. I want to say to Ruth here in Tobago, our borders are still closed. Um, our churches are closed. We do not. We cannot go into the chapels for worship. Um, but I want to assure Ruth and the committee that we are still holding them up in our prayers. And what we plan to do and we are preparing to do at this point is take the liturgy and record it, audio, and um, just share it with the other members of the committee and they can share it with other members of their, um, their congregations. And if in January we are still closed, then we will have to find a way to do some video recording um, bit by bit and put it together so that when March comes around, we can, on that first Friday of March, we can still be in solidarity with the people of Vanuatu because we are really, really eager um, mm -hmm. to immerse ourselves in the they worship because we know how much goes into it. The planning and the preparing, and we really appreciate that. And whenever we meet monthly and then weekly from January, we always pray for the writer, um, the writer country, and that helps to build a bond. And we really feel as though we are one with you. So we are going to put things in place if we can't meet face to face, so that we can still engage in that prayer and that solidarity. So I want you to know Tobago, a little Caribbean island that we are covering you in our prayers. COVID has um, impacted us because we, we depend on tourists. And um, so the economy is has grown to a halt. Um, so I could understand what's happening there with you, but at least your people can get out to to go overseas to pick the fruit. So that will still bring an income for them. But our families, um, there's nowhere, most people work for the government, um, you know, and we buy everything from outside. So we are really heavily impacted. Children are not even in school face-to-face -face either, you know, and having to be in the house, we have, um, we have increased, um, domestic violence and abuse. We have increased cases, so um, we, we're feeling what you are, what you're feeling, you know. And the women who have been vulnerable are now even more vulnerable. So our prayers continue with you, and I let the other members of the committee know that I was able to share um, in this forum with you. May God richly bless you, and indeed. That firm foundation is Jesus Christ. That's the rock mm -hmm. on which we can stand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We are also always praying, praying for you guys in different countries who are affected by COVID-19. Our prayers are with you always. We know that uh, we, we, we see this as a challenge for the whole world and especially for Christian people not coming together. 
but maybe God is showing us something. God is showing us something uh, that we have to move on to another level or something. So we don't really know. This is a Pacific country. The Pacific country is a place where we always want to greet people. And we really wanted, if uh, there was no COVID-19 issue, some of you guys from other countries, you know, sisters from other countries should come to Vanuatu and celebrate with us here. But uh, it, does, it can't happen because of COVID-19. So uh, we hope that um, in future, maybe we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll have an opportunity to meet. But thank you for, for the sister in Tobacco, for all the sharing, and thank you for all your prayers. And we are also praying for you all. Thank you. And this is uh, uh, my Pentecost, uh, my mother tongue, my language. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. Yeah, okay, let us pray. Father Mare, we have a Saboga, a Mutenumai, Namdorona do Mataku Namare, Legarigle like a Maigin Aranana, the Riguri Garigi, or Vinicabure for Romai, Kunkamaya, Vinicabure for Ora, or Vagling the Camilo Patigoro, Calcaliana. Leka mai nimpo ti goro. Kuri no mutero rongo fi sari sari ito kawaituai. Amen. Amen.